You will hear a male student talking to a union representative about placing an advertisement to sell a laptop. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories if that's possible. Sure, that's not a problem. I take it you are a member of the Students' Union? Yes, I am. Right then. I'll just get a form up. And as there is no one around, and it looks as if it's going to be quiet for a while, I'll just type the details straight into the computer for you. Thanks very much. No problem. Shall we just title it Laptop for Sale? Yeah, OK. Can you describe it generally? Well, it's in very good condition. In fact, it's hardly been used. Why are you selling it, if I may ask? Well, I've got another one which is much lighter and I don't really need two. I see. What weight is the one you're selling? It's uh, 3.5 kilograms. That is heavy these days. Can you give more details about the one you want to sell? Right. Uh, well, it's an Allegro and it's got all the latest programs. OK. What about the memory? The memory is only 0.5 gigabytes. And what about the screen size and the other features? Oh, well, uh, the, the screen is, well, let's see, it's 37.5 uh, centimetres with a standard size keyboard and a touchpad. But I've got a cordless mouse that I can put in with it if necessary. Well, some people don't like using a touchpad. What about ports or holes for attaching things to the laptop? It's got two ports. Mm. More modern laptops have more than two ports for all the extra attachments. They do. Uh, let's see, uh, what else is important? Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, the battery lasts for two and a half hours, which is OK, but not enough for long train journeys. Uh, but one thing is that it's not wireless. Right, OK, not wireless. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Anything else I can put on the advertisement? There's a webcam built at the top of the screen and uh, I can throw in a printer, a scanner and headphones, which I, I got with it in a special deal. It also comes with its own case for carrying it around. Uh, actually, the case is quite smart. I'm hoping these things will help it sell. They should do. Right, I think I've got all that. How much do you want for it? That I'm not sure about. Uh, it's worth about £900 to £1,000 new. Yeah, but you won't get that much if it's used, and even if it's in good condition. What about £500? I doubt if you'd get as much as that. More like £200 or £300. If you look at the notice board, there is one on there which is comparable to yours, and it's not more than about... £250, I think. As little as that? I'm afraid so. Shall we say £300? OK, put that. Can I take some contact details for the advert? The name's David Bristow. B-R-I-S-T-O-W. Yes, that's it. And uh, a mobile or email? Both, if you want. It's 
D I B underscore seven seven nine one at hotmail dot com. Okay, and the mobile? That's o nine eight seven five four two three three eight seven. That's it. If you send the picture, I'll add it and print it out and stick it up for you. Okay, I can get that to you today. Right, I'll type in here. Advert placed the twenty second of October. Fine, and good luck with the sale. Thanks. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between a student and an accommodation officer. First, look at questions eleven to fourteen. Listen carefully. Well, you have left things a bit late. Have you tried looking for somewhere in Newbridge? Newbridge? No, I haven't.、Uh, I've never heard of Newbridge. Well, let me show you. I've got a map here. Here's where everything is. You come into Newbridge over the bridge, and the main road in front of you is surprisingly enough the High Street. This is one of the main streets. Hmm. And branching off to the left, you can see there is West Street. That is another busy part of town. I see. Now, as I was saying, here is the High Street, and here is West Street going left. Now, if you go along West Street, the first place you come to on your right is the supermarket. It's not a very big one, but it's got most things you're likely to need. Next to it. There's the old town hall. I say the old town hall because it is about a hundred years old, but it will soon make way for a car park. I'm afraid. I suppose the car is king. Now, opposite the supermarket is the railway station. You can get very frequent buses and trains from here into the university. And next to that is the sports centre. It's a brand new one and was built on the site of some tennis courts. So that's progress. <laughs> It's got everything the keen sportsman like yourself might require. Now that's the centre of town, and I want to point out to you the buildings opposite the supermarket, but on the other side of London Road. There are two buildings there. The one further away from the High Street is called the Heights, and the one nearer the High Street is called the Towers. What are they? They are where you could find a flat. One of them, the Heights, has a number of flats for rent at the moment. Oh, good. Look at questions fifteen to twenty. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. Now the first one is flat four. That's a nice flat with a balcony, 
and you need to apply to the Newbridge Accommodation Agency to ask about that one. You'll find their number in the phone book. Number six is another nice one which has been empty for a while and you can ring the owner directly, I think. Yes, I've got her number written here. There it is. Right, thank you. Good. Now, number eight is a re-advertisement. Uh, what do you mean? Well, it did have a tenant, but now it is for rent again. So I'd like to ask about that one. Leave it with me and I'll look into it for you. Then we can talk about it when I've got more information. OK. Are there others in this block? Yes, there's number 10. Now, this one's a bit strange. It's advertised with an agency as well as privately in the local paper. Normally, if it's advertised through an agency, you shouldn't really go behind the agency and go directly to the owner. But on this occasion, I suggest you just answer the advert here in the newspaper, which the owner has obviously put in. OK. Finally, there is number 14. This is with the New Start Agency. This is an agency started by the girl who was my assistant here, and she left to make money for herself, so she's not my favourite person. But I'm afraid I would have to advise you to go through the agency anyway. Again, their number is in the phone book. All right, is that something for you to be starting with? That's great. Uh, but uh, what kind of place is Newbridge? It's a nice place. It was developed about a 100 years ago, really for people who worked in the factories around there. They were clothing factories and everyone worked in them, men, women, boys and girls. Then, when the factories closed down, things got very difficult for the town. There was a huge amount of unemployment, until a few years ago when, in the telecoms boom, a company making mobile phones started up. I think your phone was made in Newbridge. And now this company employs most of the people in the town. There are new housing estates on the edge of the town, but they're mostly occupied by young families, and there isn't much student accommodation there. Most flats and so on are in the centre. That sounds good. Well, let me know how you get on. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a conversation between Astrid and Henry about the lecture they've just heard. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Henry, don't you think Dr Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is brilliant. But he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps. Anyway, he's interesting and rather funny. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what he was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting. And sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow, your notes are so neat. 
Well, there's not much in Arabic. There is on this page. <laughs> yes, there is. Dr. Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he's talking about. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Don't you keep careful notes? Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the details will fade. I type up everything afterwards, so you can have a copy then, and you can fill in anything I've missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detailed person. I need to have everything written down before I can get the concepts clear in my head. And I am the complete opposite. I find all the detail clutters up my mind, and I get very frustrated, which was just what he was on about. He mentioned a book he had written. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual. Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. Hmm, so it is. I think I'll get that out of the library, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't, really. Yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling. You know, people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on? Do you know which way is north? Um, it's that way. <laughs> you see, I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike. And put me in a completely new place, and I am totally lost. What about maps? Oh, I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order, and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. OK, we can do that. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. Today I'm going to talk about my end of year project. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. Today, I'm going to talk about my end-of-year project. I wanted to find out why men and women tend to perform at different levels in particular sports. 
Let me start by explaining why I chose this subject. Now, as some of you may know, I'm an enthusiastic long-distance runner myself, but I have never felt particularly worried about the fact that I usually finish several minutes behind my male counterparts. How it all started was when a first-year student approached me because he'd read an article about why women swimmers never compete successfully with men, and wondered if I could look into the issue in regard to running. My tutor confirmed that a lot of interesting research had been done on this issue, and also I knew that whatever I found out was likely to be useful in training programs I run at a local girls' school. So. I started doing some preliminary reading, and what I found out was a mixture of the expected and the unexpected. It didn't come as all that much of a surprise to learn that male runners have more muscle and women more fat, and this accounts for most of the difference in sports performance between men and women. This is normally caused by differences in hormones. A male hormone, testosterone, builds muscle, whereas a female hormone, estrogen, causes fat to accumulate. Of course, this was something that we learnt about very early on in sports science. But then I began reading about the nature of muscle, and this is where I found something that did surprise me. Men and women have exactly the same type of muscle fibers, which means that they are capable of fuel burning at the same rate. I was also reading some very interesting research on differences between the average height of men and women. We all know, of course, that men are much taller on average than women, but what this means is that women actually work much harder because they have to take a lot more strides to cover the same distance. I hadn't understood that before I read this research, so I set up my own small-scale research project to investigate some of these points and a few others. I asked for men and women volunteers from the university running club, and I timed their speed in a race. Then I worked out proportions by dividing a person's running time by their height. And what I found was that by this measure, men were only slightly ahead of the women. For my second experiment, I put weights on the men's shoulders so that the men and women would have the same height-to-weight ratio. I found that under these conditions, the women actually ran faster than the men. In my last experiment, I decided to look at what is called elasticity by measuring how high the men and women could jump, and I found that my male and female participants had equal levels of jump power. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.